So last week I started working on a new web app for a client. It's a Rails app and um, it's going to be a pretty simple version one uh, new product launch. And, um, you know, it, it made me think about uh, kind of a rule of thumb that I always try to stick to, which is to stick to the scope, especially with a version one, the, the first thing that we're going to uh, roll out and launch to first users. We want to get to launch as quickly and as efficiently as possible. So the, the general approach, of course, is to avoid overbuilding. That's something that I always try to do. I, I don't want to, you know, get too far ahead of ourselves. I don't want to, I don't want to be building features that we don't actually need in version one. I don't even really want to set a lot of groundwork for things that we might build later on in a version two or, or start to, you know, um, anticipate, you know, different databases and features and groundwork and functionality that maybe just maybe users might ask us for. So let's just start building it now. Or another thing that you see a lot is over engineering simple features for the sake of scalability. Now, of course, there's some best practices when it comes to that, but you don't need to be optimizing your new web app uh, that doesn't have any users yet. You don't need to be optimizing it as if you're a year or two or five years in, in terms of scalability. So th that's just a general approach that I like to take. But there's one exception. And that exception is separating users from accounts. Now, in this web app and in most version one, like MVP, minimum viable products, it's pretty common that you just need to spin up a users table so that users can sign up, register and log in for your app and then start using it on a solo user basis. And that's actually the case in this, this particular web app that I'm building. Um, in version one, we have no need for users to belong to multiple accounts like having um, different organizations or companies. And we don't have a need yet for users or you know teams and accounts to be able to invite other users as you know for an account to have multiple users or multiple team members in their account we don't have that need yet we also don't have the need for a user to own multiple accounts and be able to switch between them using a single login those are things that we do not have in our version 1 but i always try to start up a new web app by separating a user's table and an account's table from day one, even if we don't need that feature yet. That's one exception to that over, you know, avoid overbuilding rule is, um, that's one thing that I, I do like to try to do from day one. And the reason is because later on, in all likelihood, we will need the ability to have multiple accounts and users inviting other team members and so on. And if and when that comes up, which is super common in most web apps these days, it would be way more complicated and expensive and time consuming to refactor the existing application with existing users uh, to do that later. You know, you were, we're talking about major refactorings across the entire app. We're talking about migrating user data out of the users table and into a new accounts table. And it, it would be a mess. It's of course doable, but it's expensive. We can save all that headache, we can save that cost, whether that's for cost for the client or cost for me if it's my own product or time and you know, it's just cleaner to start it off um, from day one. So um, I'll, I'll show you a little bit of, of what I'm talking about. Here is a look at uh, the simple app that I just started building. You know, it's pretty boilerplate at this point. You know, the user can log in and the user can go to their user profile. They can edit their email address, they can change their password, they can even delete their account. Super simple, we haven't really started building out most of the functionality in this app yet. And what you're, what you're seeing here is a simple single user editing their own profile. We're not even seeing accounts, we're not even seeing team member invites, we're not even seeing account settings or anything like that. But in the application, I did set it up so that at some point, we can add the interface for users to invite other users. So um, let's take a look at uh, the Rails app here. We're looking at the user model. Uh, pretty, and, and you know, the other thing about this is I try to even keep the user and accounts and associations like super simple from day one. 
Uh, I'm using Devise for the user login stuff and, and the user authentication, um, but very simply, I just created a users table and an accounts table and an account model. So we've got user, we've got a account, and then to connect them, we've got account user. So let's unpack this a little bit. The user has many accounts through account users. The user has many account users. So a user can uh, belong to multiple accounts and the user, and the, this account users table is like the connection, it's the association. So um, uh, you might think of it as like a, a team membership, right? Uh, I might be a team member of my own account. I might be a team member of another account and a third account, right? The, each one of those memberships is represented by the account users. We'll take a look at the account model. So the account has many account users, so it has many memberships and it has many team members, aka users. So a, an account has many users through the account users table. So that's how that associ association works. It's really very uh, simple and straightforward. I like how simple and straightforward it is from day one. The other thing that happens is when a user signs up for the app, we are going to do this after create action to create their account. So every new user gets a new account. We're gonna do an after create, after creating a user, we create the account that's down here. Pretty simple, create the account. We also create the account user and we set up the association. So pretty simple. Let's go through the process now. I'm gonna log out and I'm going to create a new user. So let's, uh, let's do new user at example. And I'm, so here I'm signing up, I'm creating a new user. And now I'm logged in as that user. I can edit my profile and so on. But let's take a look at the database and see what just happened here. So I'm gonna look at the users table. This record right here is the new user that I just registered. And this is the new account. Now in this case, it's still pretty simple, pretty bare bones. I'm actually just using the user's email address as the name of account of the account. Probably at some point I should actually add a, like a field to set the account name, which could be like the company name or something. Um, I also haven't even added like user names yet. That, that's gonna, you know, we're in the first week of this new app. So these are things that will build out over time. Anyway, the user has an account and here is that account user connection. So really a simple association. The user uh, is associated with this account and that's the connection there. So there you go, users and accounts. I try to keep them separate. And look, that's the only thing that I've built in terms of this uh, separating users and accounts in this application. We don't even need to have the, the UI, the interface, to be able to invite other users yet. And we don't even need the, the ability to have like an account switcher yet. Those are things that might come down the road. And if they do, we have the database structure that's ready to go that we can just extend later on if and when we're ready. So we don't need a major refactoring. We don't even need a major data migration or anything like that down the road. We're probably not even gonna build that stuff here in V1. But all I did was set up this basic uh, association and um, and you know it it, it only took a, a couple hours, it, not even, like an hour uh, extra to, to get this going. And, um, and I think it's gonna save a lot of time and cost down the road. So there you go, separate the users and accounts. And the more philosophical lesson here, of course, is um, you know there are a lot of best practices out there, like uh, don't overbuild and uh, and stick to the V1 scope, which I really really believe in that best practice. But sometimes there's a good exception to to the rule. Thanks for watching. I'd love to hear your thoughts, your feedback on this. If you do this kind of thing, leave a comment below. And um, yeah. And by the way, I just uh, recorded another video yesterday about maybe switching from Rails to Laravel. Now, I'm not gonna do that in a single application, of course, an existing application, but maybe in, in some of my upcoming videos and my upcoming apps that I build, I'll be doing those in Laravel. So I recorded a video all about that yesterday. You can check that out too. Thanks for watching.